This time, it's cavemen versus dinosaurs. Hey, friends, Barky Dog here, back with another movie review. Everybody loves dinosaurs, right? That's why Jurassic Park and all of its sequels and inferior reboots are still making money. And cave people have appeared in lots of movies, like Clan of the Cave Bear and Quest for Fire. So back in the day, Hollywood decided to mix and match. That's where the Saturday morning live action series Land of the Lost came from. Although in the case of Sid and Marty Croft, I think there was a major drug use involved too. <laughs> uh, dopey dinosaurs and corny cavemen living together in a prehistoric world. This is a trope popular in Hollywood and also in Kentucky. Anyway, here we have cavemen and cave chicks trying to survive in the distant past. That's right, this time we're talking about 1 million years BC from 1966, starring Raquel Welsh as the titular cave chick and John Richardson as the cave dude who wants to put his spear in her cave for the night. If you know what I mean. Our story begins with Fred Flintstone here and his tribe out hunting. There's jealousy and violence in the cave as cavemen vie for dominance and their cave chicks of choice. One thing leads to another and the leader of the cavemen casts Fred Flintstone out into the wilderness. There he wanders through the desert, has to avoid cannibalistic ape men and both stop motion dinosaurs as well as iguanas wearing prosthetics to make them look the part. Until he reaches an ocean and on the brink of death, he's discovered by a race of sexy blonde cave chicks frolicking in the surf. We should all be so lucky. One of these cave chicks is Raquel Welch. Like I said, we should all be so lucky. She takes a shine to this mysterious stranger, and as he recovers, he learns the ways of this new tribe. One day, a dinosaur attacks, and in an iconic scene, Fred Flintstone saves the day. But he commits a faux pas and is told to get lost. He decides to go back to his old tribe, and Raquel Welch goes with him. Along the way, she's kidnapped by a pterodactyl and carried off. Rodan here wants to feed her to its young. Anyway, cavemen get into fights. Sexy cave chicks run around in animal skin bikinis. Volcanoes erupt, and early man battles dinosaurs. There isn't a lot of dialogue, so the acting and music have to carry things along. And hey, for the most part, it works. Richardson has a standout performance as the caveman. The movie was shot in the Canary Islands in an area that looks suitably volcanic and prehistoric. And the legendary Ray Harryhausen delivered the stop-motion dinosaur action. And the movie was a big success. However, this is not an original movie. No, believe it or not, it's a loose remake of a picture from 1940, starring Victor Matur, Carol Lindus, and Lon Chaney Jr. 1 million BC tells a similar tale of cavemen battling for survival during the dawn of man. Anyway, Hammer liked the financial results they got with 1 million years BC, so they went ahead and made another big caveman movie. The result was 
When Dinosaurs Ruled the Earth from 1970. It's been called a remake, but it really isn't. It's an original story. In this one, there's a tribe of cavemen who, for some reason, like to sacrifice sexy blonde cave chicks to their sun god. According to the preamble, Earth has no moon at this point. So there are random storms and stuff. One day, some sexy blonde cave chicks are about to be given the chop when a storm hits. Our heroine, Sana, escapes by diving into the sea, all sexy. She's rescued by a cave dude and his friends on a raft and taken to their tribe. Now this cave dude already has himself a girlfriend and she's not too wild about this new cave chick he's obviously interested in. Eventually, the first tribe tracks the blonde cave chick down because they need to sacrifice her and Barney Rubble and Sana go on the lamb. Again, they encounter dinosaurs, both stop-motion and iguana-based. These cave people are more advanced than the ones we saw in one million years BC. They've developed better hunting techniques, rafts for fishing and such, and they've also developed a language. However, this language consists of, like, only 20 words, so it's quite tedious to hear them repeating the same handful of words over and over and over again. Tedious and dopey. The movie is only a hundred minutes long, but it feels twice that length. It could have done with a better edit. It's watchable, but Really, the only saving grace for this picture is that the sexy cave chick drops the bikini in a scene or two and gives us a quick peek. But that's about it. One million years BC is Citizen Kane in comparison to this thing. In between one million years BC and when dinosaurs ruled the Earth, Hammer Studios wanted to make a quick buck and literally recycled the cavemen's loincloths and sets from the first picture to make this movie in 1967, Prehistoric Women, also known as Slave Girls. I've not seen this one, but I'm not holding out any hope. Like uh, Land of the Lost, there's a time travel element where a modern day guy gets sent back into the prehistoric past, only he meets up with sexy cave chicks. I'm giving one million years BC two and a half paws up. You can tell they were really trying to make something good. And like I say, most of it works. When dinosaurs ruled the earth, is more of a one and three quarter paw movie. It's at least watchable, but like I say, it feels way too long. Both One Million Years BC and When Dinosaurs Ruled the Earth are available on VHS, DVD, and Blu-ray. One Million Years BC has a nice Blu-ray edition from Kino Lorber that contains both the US and the international cut of the movie and has a few other extras. You can also find the original 1940 movie, One Million BC, on Blu-ray. You can watch my review of another dinosaur movie here. And down there, you can watch more reviews of movies from the 1960s. You take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.